Okay, I've got something a little bit different this time. Um, I have here a Power Macintosh G3 beige tower from around 1998. This was actually my, or it's still, I guess it still is, my mother's Mac that she bought when I was still in high school. Um, these are pretty rare these days. There aren't even very many YouTube videos on these machines. And I'm, my family has always had Macs, like as long as I can remember. So I've always had, um, you know, a, a, a relatively recent Power Mac as my main workstation um, for, for years and years now. So um, this thing is uh, in pretty good condition. It's near perfect. As you can see, the case is basically like new. There's a couple of, there's like some water spots or something on the front. I don't even know if you can see it on camera, but there's a couple of water spots on the front and a couple of scuff marks on the top here. But that's pretty much it. Um, I gave this thing a, you know, like a quick cleaning when I rescued it from the garage and uh, started to get this thing back up and running. My goal is to put some kind of Unix on this thing. Um, the standard move, at least four or five years ago, maybe longer, would have been to put try to put Yellow Dog Linux on this, but I think that has pretty much been deprecated at this point. I did some cursory research, uh, research and it looks like that that distro is basically just end of life and hopelessly out of date. So it looks like NetBSD is the um, next best option. And uh, that seems like it's doable. I may have to go into the bootloader and, or the, sorry, the open firmware and play around a little bit, but I think I can get it to work. Um, a buddy of mine gave me some useful items to help with this little mini project. He's got a SCSI 2SD that uh, converter card that he let me borrow, as well as a SCSI CD-ROM in case I need it. Um, the, the Mac itself has a an IDE or a TAPI CD-ROM and a regular floppy drive. Um, but I don't know if that will work with either the open firmware to get it to boot an installer or the OS itself, NetBSD itself. So um, I've got some backups just in case. And of course I have a old laptop drive here with a SATA to, <coughs> SATA to IDE adapter, uh, as well as a bracket that will allow it to mount in the hard drive spot. Um, this is a 500 gig drive. I really have no idea if the firmware on the Mac will allow it to even see half of that. This thing came with a eight, <laughs> single digit eight gigabyte hard drive and I think 16 megabytes of RAM. And we have not updated it or upgraded it since. So I think this is basically just how it arrived, um, you know, over 25 years ago at my parents' house. The, uh, the back of the machine has an interesting selection of ports. Apparently this came with a video capture card, which was somewhat rare. Um, it's got video and audio ins and outs on the back. So at some point, these were pretty popular for media production and whatnot. Uh, I don't have much hope of getting that stuff working with NetBSD. I really doubt anyone has ever made drivers. Um, but right now this machine has Mac OS 8.6 on it. And I've got it running Apple desktop bus, keyboard and mouse, uh, ethernet, which I'll show you in a minute. And then I have a, uh, an adapter for the Mac video out to a VGA. And then I have a cheap VGA LCD. I think this thing was like 50 bucks at Best Buy, but it works fine. Um, so yeah, let me, uh, boot this up 
and then I will open it up. I'll shut it down and then open it up and show you around inside. So the power button, it's just on the front here. The Mac chime. And then we'll, sh we'll see if this thing boots up. So yeah, it's running 8.6, which is not the latest for this generation. You can put system nine on here, but I don't think I wanna do that. And we have the startup screen. It's gonna load all of its extensions that were installed 25 years ago. You can hear the hard drive chattering away. One thing I did have to do was replace the CMOS battery. Um, I'll, put a, I'll put the model number in the description, but it was basically just a little tiny lithium battery that uh, powers the clock. This is an old world ROM, so the open firmware is older. It's not like one of the blue and white towers. This is the beige tower, so it's uh, even older than the, the blue and white mini towers that um, sort of paved the way for the iMac era or during the iMac era. So yeah, we've got a bunch of old files here. The oldest file that I could find just digging around in, in this directory of install time stuff was November of 98. So I think this must have been a, probably a holiday time purchase in 98, which is kind of wild to think about. Actually, there is a November 97, Open Transport PVP MacLink Plus. Okay, so yeah, maybe, maybe this was purchased in 97. I don't know, hard to tell. Um, so yeah, one of the things that uh, was interesting is I got Ethernet working on this thing and I actually, I found an SSH, uh, yeah, an SSH client for Mac OS 8.6 and I downloaded it, which was kind of an adventure in, in and of itself, but let me log in. Okay. So we've actually got an SSH session open to my main workstation um, and it actually works. It's a little slow. These CPUs are <laughs> not really up to the task of doing modern SSH or anything else, including the web, but um, yeah, it works. So that's a good sign. And then I actually found this old Mac compatible version of Mozilla, which is called Classzilla, like classic Mozilla. And I'll show you, I don't know, Google or something. This thing, like most modern websites, won't even fit into the memory of the, you know, won't even fit into RAM on this thing. It's got, it's got, uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh, wow, 192 megabytes. Okay, so maybe we did upgrade this thing at some point. 192 megs of RAM. That's quite a lot for this day and age, or for, for, the, uh, for the time. Um, okay, yeah, the, uh, the hard drive is, I don't even know how to check the hard drive size on a machine this old. I guess maybe go to properties. Is there a properties? Get info. Yeah, 
Oh wow, 3.7 gigs formatted. So it's a four gigabyte drive. <laughs> That's pretty great. Um, yeah, and it's got like a full suite of tools like AOL Instant Messenger, Stuff It. Um, it's got Telnet installed in here. Microsoft Office, QuickTime, CD audio player, network browser, a bunch of Apple Talk stuff, Real Player, remember that? Simple text. So, you know, it's got all the basic utilities that you would want in a, uh, in a Mac workstation from 1997 or 1998. Um, I think my mother used this for Adobe tools at some point, like Photoshop. I think she had all that stuff installed on in an external drive so she could take it from computer to computer. Uh, so I don't think any of that stuff is installed locally here, but yeah, that, that's, that's how this thing was set up. Uh, we also had an iOmega Jazz drive. She may have installed that stuff on a Jazz drive. But anyways, you can see the iOmega tool is installed here. Um, that's still at home. I didn't bring it because I'm not going to be using a Jazz drive for anything. But um, yeah, this thing's got a full SCSI bus. So, you know, whatever can hook into SCSI can, can be installed on this machine as long as you can find drivers. But yeah, here's Classzilla. I don't know, let's just go to Google. Google's probably smart enough not to load a giant page on an ancient browser. Let's see. Yeah, Google. G3 Mac. Security warning. The information you have entered is to be sent over an unencrypted connection. <laughs> yeah, okay, continue. Okay, so we get some Google search results. Wow. So yeah, this is definitely the, com the condensed version of Google. You can see there's none of the extra stuff on it. It just, it knows that we're on an ancient machine. So let's see what the Wikipedia entry has to say. No common encryption algorithms. Okay. So this thing is too old to browse Wikipedia. That's pretty old. Wow. Okay, well, I mean, that's pretty much all you can do on, an, on a Mac this old. Um, I'm sure there's like some throwaway games, like pinball or whatever loaded on here, but I'm not gonna bother. So we're just gonna shut this down and open it up and show you inside. Okay, I've got the machine on its side here. Uh, the way you open it is there's a green button on the top and you just push that in and then the side lifts off like this. which exposes the inside. And then what you do is you lift these green tabs here. And then this whole thing lifts up like so. And then what you have, oh, and by the way, the, uh, the drives and the power supply are attached to this upper deck. And so it just opens up like this and then it rests on whatever surface it's kind of a weird orientation, but it rests on whatever surface it's on. And then other than that, it's like a fairly standard ATX style with PCI slots uh, motherboard. Um, you can see the battery that I replaced. It's, I don't know if you can see that it's right under, it's that purple battery right under the, uh, I think that's the, what is that? Oh yeah, that's the video capture card. Um, okay, yeah, you can see somebody upgraded. There's a ROM. There's firmware. And then there's extra RAM. So somebody must have put, let's see, 128 megs. Yeah, okay, so there's a 128 meg. I'm guessing that's a SIM or something. Um, anyways, there's three memory sticks and then a, I think a firmware daughter card down there. Um, but yeah, this thing is in pretty good condition. I mean, it works, so none of the caps are blown. The video capture card is still there. Yeah, this thing basically just sat in a garage for 20 years, um, you know, in a reasonably climate-controlled environment since 
This is Southern California. So as far as I know, everything still works. It's even got the Foxconn labels on the cables. So even way back in the day, back in the 90s, Foxconn was building stuff for Apple. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And then... Yeah, getting the, uh, getting the hard drive out. So there's the hard drive caddy. Getting the hard drive out is basically just gonna be taking those two screws out, removing the caddy, unplugging the data cable and the power, and then swapping that laptop drive in. So I'm gonna preserve the original hard drive, which is too slow to be use useful anyways. Preserve the original hard drive so I still have Mac OS and then try to get NetBSD onto that small laptop drive uh, with the SATA to IDE adapter. And then anyone who's ever tried this on an old machine knows that is much, much harder than it sounds since you gotta like fix or work around a bunch of stuff that is just not going to be, is not gonna work how you expect, especially on these old firmware machines that some of them, I mean, they ship different versions since the customer is never supposed to really see the firmware. They ship different versions with different features enabled or disabled. And it's, it's always a, just a giant nightmare to, to get these things to run anything that they didn't ship with. So we'll see how that goes, but yeah, this is uh, going to just be a, I don't know, two or three part video series that I'll do. Um, now that I know this thing is good and working, uh, I'm just going to, Try to get NetBSD on here and I'll have an, yet another Power Mac, which I already have three of them in this apartment. So I have my current one and two older ones. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. I will have some updates soon. All right, thanks, bye.